Hello, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to load a part up into SheetCam, tool that part, and create the G code that we could take out the machine and start cutting. Okay, here we go. We've got SheetCam already started, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go load the part. So I'm going to go select File, Import Drawing. Now, what I'm importing is a DXF file, which stands for Drawing Exchange Format. I created a part in SolidWorks. And that I wanted to use while we were testing our scribing unit out there and open contour cutting and some others. So I created this simple part and exported it as a DXF. Um, just about any drawing program I've ever seen. In fact, every drawing program will export DXF. And we have other videos, I believe, explaining that. If not, give me a call and I'll quickly make one. Anyway, we're going to select the scriber and cut test. We're going to say OK. And what it's telling us right here on the drawing options is scaling. Well, we've created an inch. We'll leave it alone. And it's asking us the work coordinate offset. Where do we? Where do you want me to put x0, y0? You could put it in the middle of your part on the lower left corner. But if you watch some of my other videos where we were actually at the MAD, we talked about work coordinates x0, y0 with x increasing to the right and y increasing, you know, going up the screen right here or to the rear of the machine. So we're going to pick this lower left corner of the part. Pretending you're looking down on your part, this would be the lower left corner. These other options here are for different things. They really don't really pertain to us too much. So we're going to say OK. Solid, I mean, SheetCam has now brought the part in and zoomed in on it for us. If you look at the red lines, they designate an outside open contour. So SheCam wants to cut that on the outside. The yellow lines are called inside contours, and it's going to cut them on the inside, and they're, they're colored yellow. Now, if you notice the white ones here, these are what you call open contours or open profiles. And they're, they are not enclosed. They're not an enclosed shape. So if you cut this, for instance, nothing's going to fall out of your plate. It's just nothing more than a line. Now, the difference is these, we are going to be adding what's called a, a lead-in, and I'll show you that in a second, which means we're basically going to blow a hole off the part. I just rolled the mouse wheel, by the way, to zoom in and out on sheet wheel. We may blow the hole right here, feed in, and start machining around this and get done. Whereas with an open profile, open contour, we don't want to lead in. We want to blow the hole right at the end and, it, and just start cutting. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to talk to you about um, operations um, before we go ahead and add this next operation. Let's say we're going to scribe something. And what I wanted to do on this part is scribe just this right here. Well, you'd better scribe that before you cut this part out, or there ain't going to be nothing to scribe. This metal is going to work all up, walk all over the place. So be careful in your order of operations in that if you're doing something like scribing, marking, or cutting straight lines, you know, something like that, that you do that before you actually cut the part out. You always want that to be your last operation. So what we're going to do for our first operation is we're going to do the scribing. Now to do that, we need to select our tool set and over here we, we have a whole video talking about that but let's go do that and and for instance if i say open tool set and i'm just going to pick something it don't matter i just want the tool set to change right here and i'll tell you about this in a minute here's your tools right here right well i don't have my scriber in it and this this tool set isn't really what i want for this job now we're going to pretend that we're cutting 16 gauge mild steel and for that kind of operation, I like to use the fine, te uh, fine cut tooling um, from Hypertherm to cut it. Just does a really nice cutting job. So I'm going to go to File, Open Tool Set, and I am going to select Fine Cut, Power Max 85, Fine Cut Mild Steel Inch, and bring it in. Well, now, if you notice, over here on the left, it is assigned tools with the thickness of the metal, the quality, etc. Now remember, we can create these tools in at the MAD machine, and that was the subject of a, a previous video. Now you also got Scriber down here. You got some other stuff. This little dialog right here, what it's saying is if we had already created operations, cut lines, whatnot, on this part, it's basically asking us, do you want to, you know, you know, update those lines, and I don't, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say okay, but I, you know, I didn't click anything to update, so it won't do it. So here we go, we've got our tools loaded, and now we have this. So, first operation, let's get that scriber out of the way, because we know it has to come first. 
Now, to do that, we're going to talk just briefly about layers. Um, layers in drawing programs, you could put different entities um, on different layers, and that gives you a great opportunity to organize how you want your parts cut and all. So when I created this part in SOLIDWORKS, I created a layer, and it was the open contour layer right here. If we turn off layer zero, it was just that part on that one layer. It made it very easy. Now, if I turn back on layer zero, which, by the way, is the default layer in a DXF file, the main layer, and I turn off open contour, you can see it disappeared. This is what sheet camp is going to think we're going to cut. All these right here, and it thinks we're going to... Um, you know, we're going to scribe that right there. So how does it tell it we're going to scribe it? We are going to go ahead and create an operation. So let's go to the lower left, and we're going to create a new jet cutting operation. We're going to click on that, and it's going to bring up the jet cutting dialog box. Right here at the very top, you've got a choice of an inside, outside, or a no offset. Now for a scriber, you're going to know exactly what offset means here in a second, but for right now, we're going to set it to no offset because we want the scriber to run directly on the path, I'm sorry, this path, and don't offset anything. It, we're going to pick our layer. We could pick layer zero or open contour. Well, we know we got our scriber on open contour, so let's pick that. Once again on the tool, we would pick the scriber. Now, feed rate is how fast you want to move the, scri the, um, the scriber. Overcut, we want zero on the scriber. And what overcut is, is this is coming from the plasma manufacturers. And they say that once you get done cutting apart and you're turning the torch off, if you could continue along the path for a short distance while the torch is off, it's beneficial. And that overcut they recommend is, is 0.15, but we got a scriber. We don't want to, we don't want to keep going. We, we know we're done, you know. Now, obviously, offset open pass, we don't want to do that. We definitely don't want to lead in on a scribe. And that's also right down here in the lead-in box, we have set it to none, and I'll be telling you about a lead-in in a minute, but we don't want to lead in on that. Path rules are generally done for the actual cutting operation. I know our rule set has nothing to do with scribing, so the rule set could be set to none, no problem. We're going to go ahead, and some of these other things up here you don't really need to even worry about. We're going to go ahead and say, okay, now, let's see here. Um, boo, 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 boo. Let's see. Okay, that's our scriber. Now, if I was to come up here in Sheet Cam and I have Show Direction Arrows and I click that, you see the 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 scribe line right here. We're scribing in this direction. Now we can reverse that direction. We can do some other stuff, but that's explaining that right there. Now let's go ahead and do our next operation, and we want to cut this. We want to cut this thing out. So what we're going to do once again new jet cutting operation. Now this time we're going to pick an offset. Remember I, we have three different offset, inside, outside, and no offset. Let's start off outside and that's the one you're always going to pick, just about always. So we'll start with that one and then I'll show you the consequences of the other ones. We're going to pick our layer is zero. That was the layer, if you remember, we wanted to cut. Now notice it highlighted it in white out here, so that means it selected it. The tool, we are going to pick the 0598 thick metal one because it's 16 gauge steel and we're going to pick that one there now it brought in from the tables 250 inches per minute etc now overcut is set to zero remember with a torch we want to overcut plasma manufacturers recommend 150 thou or just about four millimeters of overcut so we'll set it to 150 Offset open pass, obviously no, it's not an open path. Lead in an open pass, once again, we don't care. Now, by the way, if I wanted to reverse direction of a cut, this is where I, I would do it right here. Path rules, since we're cutting, we are going to pick the JD2 rule set, which set things like, um, well, let's go take a look at it real quick. Um, in fact, we'll come back to this. But if we go up here to... Um, job operations nope I'm sorry I got the wrong I got the wrong one we're gonna go to options and machines rule set um, post, post processor boy I'm really blowing this ain't I um, let's go to job options and somewhere here is the rule set where did we go where did we go where do we go there it is. I'm sorry. Path rules right here, right in front of my face. Anyway, we have three rules on holes smaller than inch and a quarter, slow down to 60%, etc. Well, that's where those rules are. So let's go back over here 
double click on the operation that we're doing on and bring this up and we set the the rule set to um, the JD2 rule set. You can, this, uh, these are um, other variables that, be, be honest with you, we could actually even set these at the MAD machine, but the fast probe distance is one of them that I'll tell you about. And what it means is we're probing where the material is, right? And the fast probe means is saying that if you're within two inches of where we previously did it, we, we want you to wrap it up to the rapid height uh, for our movement across the plate, but we want you to wrap it down to a different, you know, like a quarter inch or different number, whatever set, so that we don't have to probe so long. And that's your fast probe distance. For that, for that feature to take effect, we, it'll take effect anywhere within two inches right there, you know. Minimum torch height cut line length means are we going to use torch height control for a line that we're cutting that is shorter, or a path actually, shorter than a quarter of an inch. And, the, and, and the, so this is where you would put that minimum right there. Now, here we've got our lead in. If we tell it we're an outside path, we're going to need a lead in. We'll say, let's go in perpendicular at 90 degrees, the lead in length of 100 thou, because we're using very small consumables. If it was a, uh, you know, you're cutting half inch steel and you've got 85 amp consumables in there, you may want to kick that out to 0 0.15, 150 thou. But for what we're doing, 100 thou is fine. Now we say, okay, and it's warning us that um, we have open contours and we know that it's not real in error. We know that. Now, if we go over here, you can see in green, it's got our cut line where the torch is going to be running, and we picked off, outside offset. And here's your lead in. The torch is going to blow a hole here. It's going to feed in. It's going to start moving around. Now, there's a rule in plasma cutting. You're cutting the outside of the contour. You want to go clockwise. And if you're cutting an inside contour, you want to go counterclockwise. Now, to show that sheet cam already knows that fact, if we click show direction arrows, see how it's showing the direction of which way it's going to cut. And that's because if the, the swirl coming out of the plasma, she's, she's rotating clockwise or whatever, if you go in a clockwise direction, you'll get the best quality cut. On the inside, we're going counterclockwise. Why? We're feeding this way. We're swirling clockwise. Remember, everything's looking good. I'm going to right click here, select um, fit fit part and we can see everything what's going on a little better now let's go back and talk about that inside outside and no offset a little bit if i click the show true width button right here in cheat cam it shows you the width that it's actually going to cut you know now let's go back and let's change that let's say the outside offset now is an inside offset and look what happens this is not what you what you meant to cut. If we turn off that for a minute, you can see where it's cutting inside the lines. And there's times you may want to do that. This isn't this isn't one of them. Um, the other thing you could do is double click on the offset, and we could pick no offset. And we say okay, and you see it shift over to where we are now cutting directly on the line. Where would you use that feature? Let's say you had a particular piece of art or some other feature that the lines were so close together that you really couldn't even use an offset you know uh, and like the, one of the examples i use a lot is the ferrari horse and it has instances in there where you cannot do an offset so you're really not going to get a true representation of what you're trying to cut however the part is large enough where it wouldn't matter about the offset we just want to cut the line that would be a case where you would say hey cut right on the line and don't offset Let's go back to outside offset because that's what we want to do right there. Okay, there we go. Um, once again, it's still warning on us. Um, let's go back up here. Let's turn off the arrows, and here's your lead-in. Now, let's say you wanted to move that lead-in. You didn't like where it was at. You could go over here to Mode, Edit Start Points, and now as you move around, see the lead-in moving around? So if I wanted to put the lead-in here or right here, I just left-click there, and there it is. Now let's go back to View Tool Paths. Let's zoom out to this time where we can fit the material. So here we go. This red is your material you're cutting. Remember we talked about work coordinates on the machine, X0, Y0, stuff like that. Well, Sheet Cam figures right here at this corner of your material is X0, Y0 because it is placed apart on the left edge and the bottom edge of your material. Well, since we're cutting to the outside, 
our torch would actually leave this material and you just don't want to see that happen. That's not a good thing. So what we're going to want to do in this case is move the part. Now that's assuming you set X0, Y0 at the corner of the material. Most of the time when you, you set X0, Y0 at the machine, you're going to set it a little bit in from the edge. I like to set it in a quarter of an inch in from the left, quarter of an inch in fr up from the right. I'm sorry, the bottom, and that way she's going to start thinking X0, Y0 is here. But for some reason, if you did want to move the part, just go to Mode, Nesting. I'm going to hold down the left button, and I'm just going to drag the part to a new place. Now, if I go back to Edit View, um, the old, I mean, yeah, what is it called? Edit View, uh, view Toolpaths. We're back to where we were, and we're good to go. So you see seen how everything's moved. Now you notice right down here it's showing us in yellow. It's basically saying could not fit, fit lead in on some outlines. The outlines it's talking about are the circles right here be of uh, this particular circle over here because it's too close, right? That's not really an issue. It can't put that 10, that that hundred thousand lead in. Remember, we had a rule set that said if you got a small hole under a certain size, blow the hole in the middle and start cutting. This is one of the reasons why. So she will blow the hole right there and cut, but she cam is going to continuously um, warn us that we have that particular situation going. All right, now what we're ready to do is generate G code for the machine. And if you remember in earlier videos on the machine, the post processor right here, we had picked the JD2 MAD post processor. We're good to go. So let's just go over here and click this button, run the post processor, and we run it. And now it's saying, okay, well, where do you want me to store the finished cut? And we are going to store it in our documents in C file. You can pick wherever you want, but this is where I choose to store it. And we're going to say save. And it wants to know, do I want to replace it because I've run this before? And I'm going to say yes. Now I can go over to, um, let me see, where do I go to find that? The view code editor right here and bring it up. Now we're not seeing the code right there because I didn't have that showing when I generated the code. So let's just go ahead and generate it real quick again. It's no big deal. And there's your G code right there that's showing you the program. So let's roll that up a little bit. I held down the left button on that border right there and just dragged it up, right? Here's all the code that the our burn machine is going to read to cut that part. If you look right here at the very beginning, it's telling you the part is the cut and scribe test. And the first operation is no con offset open contour scriber. And here we are scribing that deal. Then it's going to go to the next operation. And it's going to be cutting the holes out first then cutting the outside. Now here's something interesting to look at. And this is some of the advanced features in our machine. We actually have written the post and everything so that when she, when the G code is ran on the controller that's inside the computer, it's going to ask the computer that you're looking at for certain values like the Pierce height, the voltage at all. Because remember, we can override all of these things on the fly and, you know, but how do you set it? Let's say you haven't run the program yet and you want to try a new voltage. You don't have to come back in here and regenerate the tables of the program at the at the MAD interface. Just change the voltage and run the program and these place keepers here are what is interrogating the user screen. What do you want me to use for the cut voltage, the pierce height, etc.? And HAL stands for the hardware abstraction layer. And inside the, the brackets right here is the cut voltage. That's, a, that's an incredibly useful feature in our machine. And especially when version 3 comes out, that will, that'll, that'll be truly remarkable. Anyway, um, I sounded like Trump there for a minute. Anyway, there you go. We're cutting right here. You know how to export it and all. What we would do at this point is click select right there. And we would say uh, maybe save it to USB drive. Or we could go into that folder, drag it to USB drive, take it out the machine, and cut it. Anyway, um, I hope this helps you out a little bit right there. Happy cutting. And please refer to some of our other videos. And you have a good day. Talk to you later.